Hi, this is Dan, continuing with the Advanced GMAT Quant Series. If you like probability, this is going to be a good one. Triplets Ashley, Bruce, and Charlie enter triathlon. There are nine competitors in the triathlon. If every competitor has an equal chance of winning and three medals will be awarded, what is the probability that at least two of the triplets will win a medal? So we got these three competitors and they all have an equal chance and we don't really care who comes in first, second, and third it's just you medal or you don't, right? So the probability that at least two of the three win a medal um, is what we're after. So there's two ways that could happen. You could have exactly uh, two winners, two of the three or you could have three winners. Um, and I just want to do a little quick brain. We'll come back to this for the actual solution, but um, how many ways are there to have three winners? Uh, it's only one way, right? It's got to be Ashley, Bruce, and Charlie, and we don't care about the order. But it's got to be those three out of nine. So there's really only one way that that can happen. And then how many ways are there to have two winners? Well, there are three possible candidates for our two winners, right? So it could be Ashley and Bruce, it could be Bruce and Charlie, or it could be Ashley and Charlie. So hold on to that thought for a minute, and we'll come back to it. But let's take a look, a quick scan at the answer choices. Do you think it's likely that at least two of the three, of the particular three that we're interested in, are going to come in the top three. It seems to me that that's more unlikely. So it should be less than 50% chance. I'm noticing choice E is three and four. I would eliminate that right off the bat, which means we're going to guess between the other choices. Because all the other choices are less than 50%. They're all around you know, 20, 25%, somewhere in that range. So actually, this one's pretty high. This one is. Uh, 15 out of 28 is also more than 50%. I might eliminate that too, just on the basis that I don't, uh, I don't think there's a more than 50% chance that at least two of the three that we're interested in are going to be in the top of the field. So without any real work, we're guessing between three choices as a worst case scenario. Okay, but let's get back to doing the actual probability here. How many different, let's forget about our, th our three winners that we care about. How many different unique sets of three, uh, top three finishers could emerge from a group of nine people? If you know a little bit about a prob probability, you know that that's a combination. So you can write that as 9C3. And if you need to go back and review combinatorics and look at combinations and permutations, that's a good idea. I could do a video especially on that if you're curious. Um, but we're choosing three from a group of nine where the order does not matter, right? If it was first, second, third, we care about the order. Since it's just who are the three winners, the order doesn't matter. So it's nine, choose three. Sometimes you'll also see people write that like this. So if you see this, that just means that there's a big group of nine and you're choosing three where the order doesn't matter. And your calculator can do this, but if you don't have access to a calculator, it's the number of people in the group that you're choosing from factorial divided by the number of people that you're choosing from the group factorial times the difference between the two 9 minus 3 factorial that will tell us the number of different possible um, groups of three that could be in the top three from the overall field of nine participants so let's do the math on that that's 9 factorial over 6 factorial times 3 factorial. Um, if you do 9 factorial is really 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 factorial because it's going to contain all the rest of the numbers from 5 on down. So that'll end up being 9 times 8 times 7 and the rest will cancel with the 6 factorial. And then 3 factorial is just 3 times 2 times 1 which is 6. So let's do some cancellation. If you take a 3 out of here, you'll get 3 and 2. If you take a 2 out of there, this will become 1 and this will become 4. So 12 times 7 is 84. So there are 
84 possible ways that this thing could happen. So I got my eye on B. I kind of think that might be interesting unless it uh, unless there ends up being some cancellation, but I'm, I'm eyeing that one at this point. All right, now let's go back to what we said about the the winners. If there are three winners and it's the three we care about, Ashley, Bruce, and Charlie, there's only one way that could happen. Only one of these 84 scenarios is the one where those three are the top three. So that's pretty much all there is to say about that. But now let's deal with all the ways there could be two winners. It could be Ashley and Bruce, Bruce and Charlie, or Ashley and Charlie. So there's three pairings of two out of three. But what about the other person in the field? There's eight other participants. So let's just take this case where Ashley and Bruce are in the top three. It can't be Charlie as the third person because that would represent this scenario where all three of our three other winners. But any of the other six could take that slot and that would be a unique winners group, a separate scenario where Ashley and Bruce were in the top two, uh, but it represents a separate way of getting that done. So there's actually six of each of these. So three pairs that could be in the top three and six ways to do each of those. So that's 18 ways in total and one way to have the three winners. So all in all, 19 ways to have at least two out of three and 84 total ways to identify a group of three from a field of nine. So the best choice is B, 19 out of 84.